Oh, Jesus Christ. It's quite bright, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, oh, there's my Uncle Chris. Already gi giving me critique already. Thank you, Uncle Chris. Um, it's a good thing I bought an extra pair of pants because I'm shitting myself. Um, they're in my bag somewhere. Any parents in tonight? Fabulous single or with partners or, yeah? Any parents together? Sort of. Oh, forget that fucking joke then. That's a waste of time. Uh, yeah, so to sort of give a bit of a, bit, bit of a background about myself, um, I've got fantastic parents. I love my mum and dad's pieces. They're fantastic. I've just repeated myself. Well done. <laughs> Broke rule number one. Uh, my... Mum and Dad, to sum them up individually, uh, my mum's got champagne taste but lemonade money. <laughs> That's her brother over there who's laughing. <laughs> Hi, Uncle Chris. <laughs> and my dad uh, is, has been having a midlife crisis for, so he's 62. So for the past 60 years, he's been having a midlife crisis. He... Uh, <laughs> He bought a, a Harley Davidson and sold it six months later. So my dad, in a nutshell, lives in Texas. Well, he lives in Calgary in Canada now, so he thinks he's all that. He thinks he's a rock star. So um, my mum's fantastic. I love my mum. Again, my dad, but my mum's really supportive. Uh, I used to live in Folkestone in Kent. Anybody know Folkestone in Kent? Oh, fantastic. Shit hole. Yeah, great. <laughs> Uh, so I used to live there, but I realised people were high six in each other every way, every day. So I thought, I thought I'm going to leave and I'm going to go to university, which I did. And I did a good job of it. And after I left, my uh, sort of love life was in crisis. The only sort of long-term relationship I could keep was with Holly Willoughby and Philip Schofield. Uh, so that was going really fucking well for me. Like, and I had no job. I didn't have very much at all. So I rang my mum and she went, come down, well, come, come down, it's absolutely fine. You can sort yourself out. I'll come and help you and stuff. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, that's fine. I'll come down, you know. So I go down to Kent and I was sort of moping around the flat, the, the flat, the house. And she comes into my room and says, right, come on, no more of this moping. We're going to get you out. We're going to get you feeling really happy. And, you know, we're going to make you feel so much better. So... Have you ever said something or done something that's instantaneously made your brain, your lungs and everything go to your arsehole because you feel so sick? <laughs> Have you ever done that? So this was it. This was the defining moment in my 26 years of life. I'm sure there'll be many more to come after that. Don't worry. Oh, yes. Thank you, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so she... So before I said what I'd said, I kind of took it into consideration. You know, it's kind of that the last Jaeger bomb that's on the table from the waitress that's warm and flat. It makes you feel that sick instantly. And she, I said, oh, the new Fifty Shades of Grey film's out. Pause for awkwardness. And she latched onto it like a fly round shit. She was like, yeah, let's do it, let's go. That's such a fabulous idea. She got really camp all of a sudden, I don't know why. She went, yeah, that's a great idea, let's do it, let's go, it's fab. And I was like, oh, shit. So um, she sort of arranged the tickets and we go to the cinema and we get to the front desk and she's, she's nearly running around this cinema like, she's having a great time and... I thought, I'm going to have to set some kind of ground rules with this because it's just going to get too insane. So we go to screen eight and she's kind of jogging along and she goes to open the door and I put my hand on the door and I say, right, rules. And she looks at me and goes, I've read the book, I've read the book. I know you've read the book. Calm down because you told me about it about three weeks ago. Let's just chill. So she, um, I said to her, right, don't look at me. Don't talk to me. No heavy breathing. No taking notes. I don't want any of that shit going on. So she, so we go into the cinema and we sit down. And as if it's not awkward enough, this weird cluster of, let's say, elderly, let's say gentlemen kind of come in and they go off to disperse into different seats. They look like they signed a register that one of some kind, let's just say that. And um, I sit down and I think, right, so this is pervert central basically so I sit down next to my mum and the film starts and Anastasia Steele and Christian Grey it's all kicking off and then the first sex scene happens and with my mum 
She's 59 years old at this point. I know what sex is about, but she seems to have this kind of vibe that I didn't know what was going on. But I'm fully aware. So I'm sat next to her, and it's kicking off like, you know, it's, there's genitals, mum, genitals, mum, mum, genitals. <laughs> all over the screen. Really naughty. And um, so the only way... I, honestly, this is a true story. I swear in my life, this is a true story. So I'm here. My mum's here. So this is kicking off here, right on the screen. Christian Grey is going mad. He's going on into town on Anastasia Steele. And all I see... Has anybody seen like a horror film like Saw or Annabelle with a doll in it with a really weird, really bizarre head? <sighs> so keep that image in mind for the next moment. So I'm here. Anita Pendry, my mum, is here. I see this out the corner of my eye. What are you doing? I've got a parent now. She's 59 years old. So I lean in really close and say, what are you doing? And she didn't say anything. I think I'd just say something at least. And she went, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, this is true. And I said to her, oh, for the love of God. I was like, please just watch the film. I know it's shit, but please just watch it. So we carry on watching the film. Now, uh, Shelley will know this. So we get to the... We've done the Red Room scene. That was horrific. Then we do the scene where Anastasia Steele moves into this apartment in Canada. She hasn't unpacked anything at all yet. She's got boxes everywhere, he high and everywhere. So she's obviously... Sorry, Christian Grey's come round with a nice bottle of champagne. And she's got these two uh, teacups out from the... <laughs> Shelley knows uh, from the um, from the boxes, and my mum owns a restaurant. To give it a bit of context, my mum owns a restaurant in Kent. It's tiny. It's not like bloody Gordon Ramsay, but she does a good job. Like bless her, and she's very particular about glasses with the correct drink. Everything has to be perfect temperature. Honestly, champagne taste lemonade money. Please bear this in mind. My mum lived on a shit street in Blaken somewhere when she was a kid. Stamford Road, honestly. <laughs> Correct, thank you. So um, we get to this scene and Christian Grey's got this nice bottle of Dom Perignon and pours uh, this lovely champagne into these two teacups. The saw doll was back, but she had a face of her this time. What now? What? Paused again, didn't say anything again, which was great. Mum, what is it? That's not right, is it? I have just watched Christian Grey bang the back doors of Anastasia Steele for a good probably about half an hour. And she thinks champagne in a teacup is incorrect. <laughs> and that's my mum. But... <laughs> So we get to the end of the film and she says, oh, we should watch the next one next year. Uh, I'd rather shit in my hands and clap. Thank you very much. So at the end of that, um, has anybody read uh, Fifty Shades of Grey? Yeah, hands up. Oh, sh oh there's <laughs> a couple of shameless people in the audience. Yeah, oh, you're in it. Oh, that explains a lot then, doesn't it? That's why it's so poorly written. Anyway. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, uh, my nine-year-old niece could have written Fifty Shades. I would have rang social services first, obviously, but my nine-year-old nine niece could have written Fifty Shades of Grey. Has anybody seen Fifty Shades of Grey? Seen it? Spoiler alert, it's shit. Thank you very much. <laughs>